All right, guys, welcome to the review unit on the American Revolution. Here are your objectives for today. You will be able to understand why the people in the 13 colonies became discontented or angry with how England was governing or ruling them. You will also understand that the discontent in the colonies toward the English led to the 13 colonies declaring independence from England or breaking up with England. You also understand that to gain independence, the 13 colonies had to fight a war against a more powerful England. And lastly, you will know that our nation became known as the United States of America after the defeat of England in the American Revolution. So let's talk a little bit about the causes of the revolution. Okay, first of all, the French and Indian War, as we saw in our previous unit, England and France controlled parts of the New World. The English controlled the 13 colonies, and France controlled this area right next to the 13 colonies. So what problem do you see occurring there with those two territories? This war was fought between England and France for control of the New World. England received help from the colonists. France received help from the Native American tribes who they traded fur with. England, with the help of the colonists, wins what? this war. So let's talk about how the French and Indian War affected the colonists' view of England. Okay, so let's talk about the aftermath first of the French and Indian War. The British and the colonists, as we know, fought the French and Indians. The purpose was for control of colonial America. The outcome was the British and the colonies win, just like we talked about. The effects were England, or the British, passed many laws that would tax the colonists to pay back the debt from this war. The British said the taxes were a payment for defending the colonists, but this caused a lot of resentment between them and the colonists. The Proclamation of 1763. Now, even though England acquired land all the way to the Mississippi River after the French and Indian War, so technically all this was England's land, they made a proclamation or a statement saying that the English or the colonists could no longer move past the Appalachian Mountains. So basically, all this land that they gained right here was to remain vacant. Okay, now, England said they wanted to have this land as a buffer area between the Native Americans and the colonists. So they said they were doing this to try to protect the colonists. Also, this was a way to keep the colonists closer so that they could be taxed. Now, this angered the colonists. The colonists saw this as England trying to control them and tell them what to do. Okay, we kind of think of this, we've talked about this many times this year, as the parent versus the teenager. England was like the parent, and the colonies were like the teenager. Okay, just like you guys, you don't like to be told what to do, and so the colonists thought that England was trying to control them and tell them what to do, so this made them very angry. Another thing that caused the revolution, another thing that made the colonists angry, was the Stamp Act. This was created by England to make the colonists pay for the French and Indian War. So that war that they just fought and gained all that land from the French, they wanted to make the colonists pay for this war. They said, this war happened next to the colonies, it happened in the New World, you should help pay for this. Okay, so the first tax was the Stamp Act, which made a tax for all documents made of paper. They had to have the official stamp of the crown to be legal, something like that right there. And this was another way for paying off the debt from the war. Now, this led to protests and boycotts. Okay, and we know this is civil disobedience. Remember, civil disobedience is where you are going against a policy that you're supposed to follow, but you're doing it in a nonviolent way, like protesting or like boycotting. Okay, and eventually this act was repealed or overturned. And so they got rid of this because the colonists showed so much discontent for this act. The next tax that were put on the colonists was the Tea Act. And this taxed all tea that was not from the British. And so if you got tea from somewhere besides England, this tax had a tea, or this tea had a tax on it. This caused the prices to go up. Okay? And just like you don't like to pay higher prices, the colonists got mad when they had to pay more for their tea. Tea back then was the drink of choice. Okay? Kind of like your Cokes today. This is what tea was back then. Everybody drank tea. And so this made everybody really mad when they had to pay more for it. Okay, so the colonists responded by having the Boston Tea Party. Remember, this was organized by the Sons of Liberty, which was the patriot group in the colonies, and they dressed as Native Americans. They went on board the ship that had all the British tea on it, and they threw the tea off the side of the boats. 
And this angered the British. And so the reaction to the heavy taxation with no representation in Parliament was the Boston Tea Party. Okay? They said, if you're not going to give us representation, you can't tax us. Now, England's response to the Boston Tea Party was basically grounding all of the colonists in Boston. Okay? The British grounded the colonists, remember parent versus teenager, okay? The English, as a parent, grounded the teenager or the colonists. Here's how they grounded them. They closed Boston Harbor until the debt was paid in full from the tea. They changed the local government of Massachusetts. So basically, they took over their government. They said, you can no longer control your own government. We're going to do this for you now. They also allowed for quartering of troops and homes. They allowed English soldiers to come stay in homes of the colonists. And all criminals were sent to England for trial. So basically, there, were no, there was no trial by jury in the colonies anymore. If you committed a crime, you had to go to England and face a jury from England, which would probably be biased. And finally, guns or arms were taken from many of the colonists. Okay, another cause of the revolution was mercantilism. Remember, this is when England wanted to use the colonies to benefit themselves. They established the colonies for their own gain. And so they wanted cheap raw materials, also known as natural resources from the colonies. They wanted gold and silver, lumber. They wanted cash crops like cotton. England then sold finished products to the colonies. Only profit is for the mother country in mercantilism. Okay, so England gained all the profit here, and really the colonies didn't get anything out of this. And so it made them very mad that they had to deal with this type of economy. Okay, remember, the colonies could only trade with England. Even if they could find cheaper products from France or Spain, they could not get those products because they could only trade with the mother country or England. Here is a good representation of what mercantilism is. Okay, here's the colonizing country, or England, and here is the colonies. Okay, remember the colonies send raw materials to England, and England sends them back manufactured goods made in the factories in England. Okay, and another cause of the revolution was lack of representation. All taxes and acts were instituted by the British government. Parliament, which we've talked about being Britain's Congress, made laws which hurt the colonies. Now, this made American colonists mad because they did not have a say and were angered by this. Okay, they didn't get to send people to Parliament or Britain's Congress to have a say. They didn't get to voice their opinion about these taxes. And so this made them very angry towards England as well. The slogan became, no taxation without representation. So basically they're saying, you can't tax us, England, if you're not going to give us representation. If you're not going to let us come voice our opinions in Parliament, you shouldn't be able to tax us. And the final cause of the revolution was the Boston Massacre. Okay, this is where colonists were fed up with taxes in Boston. And so lots of colonists went out to the streets to protest. And as sometimes happens, this protest turned into a riot. They threw snowballs with rocks in them at the British soldiers. The British soldiers were backed up against the wall. They were greatly outnumbered by the colonists. There were a lot more colonists than British soldiers. So when the British soldiers felt like they were about to be attacked or about to be hurt, they started firing into a crowd, and they actually killed a few of the colonists. Paul Revere created an engraving showing the soldiers being the aggressors, and the reason he did this was to gain support for the patriots. Now we know that the aggressors were actually the colonists, it wasn't the British soldiers. But he made this engraving as a piece of propaganda to gain support for the American Revolution. This was published in newspapers all over the colonies, and colonists saw this as the British being ruthless towards them. So this was another thing that made them want to go to war against Britain or declare independence from Britain. Okay, now let's talk about the Declaration of Independence. Remember, we talked about this this year as being the breakup letter with England. Okay, so this is where the colonies break up with England and become their own nation. Okay, the teenager's kind of growing up here. And as the teenager grows up, they want to become independent. And so they're trying to become independent from England by declaring independence from them. The colonists are fed up. The colonists send a list of demands to the king 
as a result of the First Continental Congress. So at this meeting, our forefathers met and they said, we need to make sure that the king follows a list of our demands. And if he doesn't, we'll take further steps at the Second Continental Congress. Okay? The problem is the king never responds to their list of demands. And so they call the Second Continental Congress. And this is where the colonies decide, or decide to dissolve its relationship with England. Basically, this is where they decide it's time to become independent and break up with England. They told England how in the new nation of America, all men are going to be created equal, unlike they are now. We also have unalienable rights that cannot be taken away. Remember, these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So, the Declaration of Independence was created on July 4th, 1776, a.k.a. Independence Day, which we celebrate still today. They were written by Thomas Jefferson to declare independence from England. Remember the breakup letter. And here are some of the complaints they had towards England. Remember, we call these complaints grievances. First of all, we had taxation without representation. Okay, We didn't give consent for these taxes, yet we were still being taxed. This was one complaint we had. Another complaint we had is that the king had too much power. He had absolute, total power. Okay, We didn't want a ruler having total power over us. Also, the colonists were not allowed to speak out against the king. And so they never had a say in what the king was doing, which made them mad as well. Okay, Remember the quartering act, where we had to allow soldiers to stay in the colonists' homes. This angered the colonists as well. Illegal searches and seizures. These British soldiers would come into homes and search them without any warrant. And then finally, we were not receiving a trial by jury of our peers. Okay, So when we were convicted of crimes in the colonies, no one was getting fair trials. They were being sent to England for a trial in front of English citizens. Okay, So after we declare independence, England decides, you know what? We're not just going to let you become independent. We're going to fight for it. And so that is when the American Revolution started. So, battles and events of the revolution. Okay, now remember, the three main battles that we have to remember were Lexington, Saratoga, and Yorktown. And the way we remember that is LSY. Okay? Remember, Lexington was the first battle of the revolution. And this is where Minutemen would respond to fight the British trying to take weapons from the colonists. The British tried to march into Lexington and take the colonists' stockpile of weapons. And this is where the colonists would not let this happen. So this turned out to be the first battle of the revolution. Saratoga was the turning point of the revolution. Remember, we remember this one by saying Saratoga, jumping in a circle and saying Saratoga, France. This was the turning point of the war. And this is where we saw that, hey, we can actually win this war. And when we saw this, we sent Benjamin Franklin to go talk to the French to get their help. Okay, we proved to the French, hey, we can actually win this war and defeat England. And so, after Saratoga, the French came in on the colonists' side. They not only gave the colonists men, but they gave the colonists their navy and many other supplies. So without the French, we probably would not have won the American Revolution. And the final battle was Yorktown. And this is the final battle of the Revolution because this is where Cornwallis, the general for England, surrenders. He decides this war is costing too much money. We don't have enough men. There's no way we're going to win. We have to surrender. And so this was the end of the war, Yorktown. Okay. Another important battle that you need to remember is Valley Forge. Or not a battle, but an important event. And this is where Washington removes his troops from battle during the winter to train them. Okay. Now remember, this was very harsh circumstances. Valley Forge was very cold at this time. The men didn't have shoes. They had little supplies, and so a lot of them ended up dying. But the ones who stayed, they learned how to fight. They learned better fighting techniques. And this resulted in a more unified army, and they were better prepared to fight the British for the rest of the war. Okay, When the war was over, after the Battle of Yorktown, we signed the Treaty of Paris. This treaty recognized American independence. So now we were recognized as an independent country for the first time. It also set the borders of America at this time. Remember, in early America, the borders weren't what they are today. The border in the north was still Canada, but to the west, the border was the Mississippi River. And remember, Florida was the border in the south. It was still being controlled by Spain at this time. Okay, important people of the revolution. This is the last part of our review. Okay, we're going to look at the important people that you're going to have to know for the star test. Okay, first of all, 
Abigail Adams was the wife of John Adams. She served as his confidant and support while he served in the Continental Congress. Remember, the Continental Congress is what made the Declaration of Independence and also made our first government, the Articles of Confederation. When John and others were considering a Declaration of Independence, Abigail reminded him to take care of the women who would not hold themselves bound by laws in which they had no voice. She said, remember the ladies, because at this time, remember, the ladies could not take part in government. They could not vote. So she reminded John to remember the ladies when he was declaring independence. John Adams was a lawyer and a politician. He defended the British soldiers following the Boston Massacre. This isn't to say that he agreed with England and he was a loyalist. He was still a patriot. But he thought that these people who were involved in the Boston Massacre, the British soldiers, he thought they deserved a fair trial. And so he represented them. He was also a member of the Continental Congress representing Massachusetts. He was also a strong supporter of independence or a patriot. Wentworth Cheswell was an African-American patriot. Like Paul Revere, he made the same all-night ride back from Boston to warn his community of the impending British invasion. So he also said the British are coming in the first battle, okay, just like Paul Revere. He served in the army, and he also fought at the turning point, the Battle of Saratoga. Samuel Adams was the founder of the Sons of Liberty. He helped organize the Boston Tea Party, and he played a role in many of the events which contributed to the revolution. Mercy Otis Warren was a woman involved in the revolution. She was a wife of a Massachusetts patriot, and she anonymously wrote several propaganda pieces supporting the patriot cause. James Armistead was a former slave in Virginia. Marquise de Lafayette, remember, who was the French general who came over to help during the war, recruited him as a spy for the Continental Army. Posing as a double agent and a forager and servant at British headquarters, he moved freely between lines with vital information on British troop movements for Lafayette. So he would go and hear what the British were saying, and he would go report back to Lafayette and tell them what their strategies were. So he was very important to the war. He also contributed to the American victory at Yorktown. Ben Franklin, he was a member of the committee, which wrote the DOI, but he spent most of the time period of the American Revolution in France. What he was doing there is trying to get France's help in joining the war and helping out the patriots defeat the English. His rep he represented the colonies as the American envoy starting in 1776 and remained until 1785. He negotiated the alliance with France, and then he also negotiated the Treaty of Paris, which ended the war. Bernardo de Galaviz. He was a Spanish nobleman who became governor of the province of Louisiana. Okay, so he was from Spain. He was someone who was not from here. He was protected, or he protected American ships in the port of New Orleans and helped transport war supplies and took up arms and fought to protect Louisiana. Crispus Attucks. Remember, we talked about this guy earlier this year. He was the first person killed in the Revolutionary War. Remember, he was the first person killed at the Boston Massacre. King George III, remember, was the King of England at this time. He struggled to enforce his authority throughout his reign. Okay? The colonists did not like him. They did not want to listen to him. He was seen as a tyrant or a harsh ruler by the colonists, which eventually led to us declaring war against him and his country. Heim Solomon was a Jewish immigrant to America who played an important role in financing the revolution. He was arrested by the British as a spy, but he actually escaped. He was used by the British as an interpreter with their German troops. He helped British prisoners escape and encouraged German soldiers to desert the British Army. Patrick Henry, he was a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses, remember the first representative government in America. He spoke against the Stamp Act, and he served in the Continental Army. And you probably remember his fam famous quote where he said, give me liberty or give me death. So basically he's saying that if we don't win freedom, I'm willing to die. And then Thomas Jefferson, we all know that he wrote the Declaration of Independence. He was part of the Continental Congress. And he was an early and effective leader in the American Revolution. Marquise de Lafayette was a French who played a leading role in two revolutions in France and in the American Revolution. He respected the concept of liberty and freedom and a constitutional or limited government. Between 1776 and 1779, he fought in the American Revolution, 
commanding forces as, as a major general in the colonial army. He was important because France joined the colonists against the British. And Thomas Paine, remember, he was the writer of common sense. And that was that pamphlet that said, if a country is treating you unfairly, it's common sense to overthrow that country or get rid of them. We used his pamphlet and his thoughts when we were breaking up with England and making the Declaration of Independence. And finally, John Paul Jones was the founder of the American Navy. We all know George Washington, and we all know the many things he did. He was a resident of Virginia, a surveyor, a planter, and a soldier in the French and Indian War. And remember, this part in the French and Indian War helped him see how the British fought, and he would use the, their tactics against them in the American Revolution. He was a delegate to the First and Second Continental Congresses, Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolution, and the Chairman of the Constitutional Convention in 1787. And of course, he was our first President. Okay, that is all for the American Revolution Review. So after you get done with your notes, make sure that you get your quiz taken and have a good day.